What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today, the new units are out. I'm a little bit late actually talking about this, but uh, I wanted to take it all in first, okay? And not just rush a video without me knowing anything. Okay, so uh, I wanna talk about the usability of these new units and uh, how to build them, where to use them, how to use them and uh, stuff like that, you know? And after one day of talking to some people, uh, looking at some replays, checking out the skills a bit, so after summoning a couple of them as well, now I can finally say some things, you know? And uh, yeah, let's start with the first one. Blood, yeah. First of all, whoever named this unit, You know Comptos is trolling, okay? Irene, Layla, Jessica, and Liliana. It's super normal names, right? And then Bloodia. So, well done Comptos, another great, <laughs> another great troll. But yeah, jokes aside, attack lead, good base stats, crit awakening, which is bad. Uh, we're gonna talk about why that's bad. Uh, first skill, glancing, very strong, 70% chance, two turns, very nice skill. Actually, the whole family, just a really good first skill. Second skill, now we're getting a stripper. A very consistent stripper. Three turn cooldown, 80% chance, two hits, both hits, strip and attack break. Very, very consistent skill right so first skill second skill very good but then third skill is a little bit lackluster uh when i saw this unit first when they revealed the skills i said it would be nice if they could make it so she does three dots right dot on every hit and then heal block as well and then you would end up having a max of four debuffs and she would be able to push back 100 percent, right which would be pretty cool but the way they made her she only puts one dot and she puts um heal block and then the third hit absorbs or pushes back so it's it, uh, it's not good enough i would say i don't think it's i i think it has like a really good room for improvement but I don't think this is enough for the third skill. I personally think the second skill is way better than the third skill. Uh, some people are saying how this can help against Junos and Wedget maybe, but I still feel like you're getting only a maximum of 50% pushback and you're getting resisted probably on some of the things. So some units you're gonna push back by 25%. And, and you might not even get heal block on some, and you know you're gonna get resisted a lot because there's a lot of checks naturally, right? So I think they could have easily made it put dots on every hit. And because of the amount of resistance that can happen, it would balance itself out, I'm pretty sure. But the unit looks pretty good. You know, it has a good potential to, to be a very strong unit in the future. Not like the Indras. The Fire Indra, boom, they made it damage, damage, damage skills, but none of them do any damage. And, and it looks just like there's, it's a boring, like it's just boring, right? Every skill just damage without anything. And it does no damage. The multipliers suck. <laughs> so like, there, there's not an actual plan with this unit, right? It's going to be what? Even when they buff it, it's probably just going to be a Reno offense unit. They were kind of lazy with the design of some of the Indras. But, like, these look pretty cool. AoE strip on second skill on the three turn cooldown. As long as they change the third skill a little bit, I think this is going to be an amazing unit. 
So I'm looking forward to the actual first time this family gets buffed. I think it's going to be pretty big. Now the crit rate awakening, I said it's a bad thing. Ragdoll, right? You're going to be fighting ragdolls all the time. Especially if you're running AoE stuff. You're getting a 30% crit rate. You're, you're just dead against ragdoll. You're just dead because you're going to be hitting three times here and two times here AoE. Even with a 15% crit, it's kind of weird, but 30, you're dead. Like, Ragdoll will destroy you. Now, how to build this? Well, you can go violent. Or you could go despair, of course. <laughs> now, you could probably go swift as well if you can't speed tune yourself. But I would say Violent, Despair. Uh, very close to being good. Very close to being good. But yeah, you want to run her, of course, before your CC units, before your follow-up, before a Chong Pong or something, right? And uh, yeah, that's, that's all I have to say about Bloodia. Yeah. Irene. Now, this one is the weirdest one, probably, because this skill... Is, is like a scroll trap that kills your opponent slowly, but it's only 10 turns and and it counts every single turn of every single unit. And then also this can decrease if you get attacked. Like if she gets attacked, this is going to even decrease less than 10 turns, which is just very, very low, right? And this HP drop happens only when a... Wait, never mind. Enemy and ally. I thought it was only enemy for this one, but it's both. So you can do 50% HP decrease with this. Which I guess it's not too bad, but it can be decreased by her getting punched. Uh, second skill. It's and this one is weird. This one is not that good. This one definitely needs a buff. Grants the, ref grants the reflect harmful effect on the ally target for two turns. This is a new buff that we got. Um, basically, it is what it says it is. The target under reflect harmful effect reflects harmful effects, excluding inability. So you can't reflect stuns and sleeps and stuff like that, but you do reflect everything else. Which is cool, but a single target one, maybe if they added gains additional turn after this, that would help. Maybe on two allies, maybe, or something. It could be cool. But right now, it's a little bit lackluster, but still, it's a cool mechanic. I think it has a lot of potential. Now, what they can do with this skill is increase the amount of turns, I think, would be the best. If they increase the amount of turns to like, I don't, I don't know how much. I would have to test it out to know what's a good number, but uh, I think that's probably the best way to buff this, right? Because like this one is kind of tough because you don't want to overtune it. Maybe fifteen. Because like if you overtune it a bit, it might be too strong. Because then you're trapping a unit for like a very long time. But uh, yeah, since they added this effect here to decrease the number of turns when she gets attacked. Um, I think they could do, maybe they could buff it to 15 for now and then we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I like it. The the. The reality is I like these units a lot because they're different, they're interesting, they have a lot of potential. So with, with some good buffs, they can be very good, like all of them. Also, she wakes into resistance. How you want to build her? I'm guessing violent. Violent, just full speed HP HP, speed HP res. Um, you just want to make sure... 
I guess to try to utilize the, the resist awakening. She is a support with very nice stats, tanky. So yeah, I, I think a violent hunter res build would actually be nice. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this one getting buffed a lot. Next one, Layla. Now this is supposedly the best one right now. Out of the normal elements, I like it. It's not bad. Second skill, amazing. Third skill, prevents the enemy from removing harmful effects with an 80% chance for one turn if you attack the enemy under harmful effects. It's 100% once you skill it up, which is really good. In addition, your attack bar increased by 10% whenever an enemy is granted with harmful effects. So this one is pretty cool, right? You're putting the anti-cleanse thing. So you can put this on a Juno and uh, Juno won't be able to cleanse the rest of the debuffs that she has on her, which is nice. That works for all other units as well, of course. So you want to strip with this and then your follow up is something that puts debuffs and then she's going to get 10% bar for every single debuff, which is going to make her move again. So the way you want to build her is go despair, of course because you don't really need to proc anywhere and uh, since she's going to be taking a decent amount of turns she will have the skill way more often as well um, because it's only a three turn cooldown with a unit that's getting this many turns it, it sounds pretty good it sounds really good on paper like this unit and uh, i think it's gonna be good could they buff it in the future with something yeah they could probably do some small kind of buff for third skill, add something maybe. Because I think this right now, the way it is, it's good. Maybe a addition of something more would help to, to be even better. But I think this one has really good potential as well. Set this first skill again, really good. Defense lead and uh, she works into accuracy, which is really good. I wish this one awakened to accuracy as well, but Comtos said, no, bitch. So yeah, sadly, sadly, this one kind of got destroyed by the awakening. This one could have also been accuracy awakening, but I guess res also makes sense a bit. Also, I didn't say this one has accuracy lead, which is good. And then next one, we have Jessica. Jessica awakens into accuracy as well. First skill, really good. Second skill, the good one. And then we have, for every harmful effect granted yourself, the damage dealt is increased by 20% and the damage taken is decreased by 5%. Grants one of the harmful effects granted yourself to the target when attacking. In addition, ignores all harmful effects granted in yourself and gains immunity against the Oblivion effect. This is kind of ridiculous. Like, it has a lot in this passive. Basically, she can take all the debuffs, but none of the debuffs affect her. But if she has a lot of debuffs, she does a lot more damage. But she also takes less damage. <laughs> and she's also immune to Oblivion completely. And then she also puts harmful effects on the opponents that you have on yourself so you could use this and aoe put harmful effects like if you have defense break on yourself this is also gonna defense break aoe <laughs> so it's it's really a interesting mechanic i like what they did here right you can stack her with debuffs but they don't do anything they just make her stronger so I like, I think this one is probably already done. Like I like this unit. I'm sure they will still buff it because Comtois works in mysterious ways. But I think I like this one probably the most out of all of them where it's like the most balanced out right off the start. Also HP lead. Accuracy Awakening, really good. Everything goes together. It's defense type, which isn't a bad thing. 
right? It's not a bad thing. The stats are pretty good. Like everything is kind of well balanced out. So if she was support, defense, HP, attack, I don't think it would matter. I don't think any of those would matter because like they really balanced out the stats well for each type. So I like this. I think it's pretty good. How do you build her? Violent is good. Despair could also be a thing, but I think you still want to go violent on this one. You want to outfit more damage. You want to put more debuffs. The AoE still is pretty nice for Despair, but I think you're going via on this one. Are you putting her on crit damage? Potentially on crit rate, speed, crit rate, HP. You're getting Accuracy Awakening. You can easily put Accuracy as substats to get her to like a good amount. She can also strip for your AoE stuff, but then she's also kind of like a Chroma. It's just a very nice unit, man. Just very, very nice. I, I, I don't know. I, I like this one a lot. I think Comptos did a really good job. And then we have Liliana, which looks like the most fun one. And she has an... There's another new mechanic here. So Comptos is bringing a bunch of new mechanics with these units. Glancing. The shitty second skill. I hope this one gets buffed. Oh, imagine this gets buffed. So you get an additional turn when you use it. And then this one also gives you an additional turn when you use it. So you can chain this into this, into a hit. <laughs> so basically, Lord of Hell. You click this and then you transform into this guy. What happens when you transform to this guy? You get a turn instantly. It has HP that's 50% of your max HP and increases your damage, your critical damage by 50%. Once its HP becomes zero, it disappears and Devil Maiden reappears. So when you kill this guy, she comes back. You can also transform back on your own. And uh, let's say if he has debuffs and you transform to her, she doesn't have debuffs anymore. If she has debuffs, you transform to this, he doesn't have them. But if you have debuffs, if you have buffs on her and you transform to this, he doesn't have the buffs and the opposite. So keep that in mind. But what does the Lord of Hell do? He only has one skill. Attacks all enemies to decrease their defense for two turns with a 50% chance. If the enemy's defense is already decreased, the attack decreases its attack power for two turns with a 50% instead. And then if they're both, if there's both defense break and attack break on a unit, you get a stun with a 50% chance. Now, I think here, they went a little bit too far, okay? They put a 50% on everything. Now, I don't agree with that. They could have easily made the stun 100%. Because, like, if you already have a condition to land defense break with a 50 and attack break with a 50, why not make the stun 100? Because, like, that's already very RNG conditioning, right? But... If this guy works the way I think he works on revenge, this like if you build him on triple revenge or her, if it's going to work, it, I don't know. It, it might be OK. I'm not really sure. I have to see it. I have to see it in, in play to know what's happening. All right. So I might do some videos soon testing this guy, maybe someone lets me play on their account maybe i can test it show you guys a little bit maybe i check some replays uh do some commentary on it we'll see uh how you want to build this speed crit rate hp speed crit damage hp potentially violent 100 percent violent revenge triple revenge those are i feel like the two builds that uh, you want to try if this works on revenge the way I think it does, triple revenge could be pretty good. But violent revenge as well sounds very strong. Also, crit awakening. Good. Very good awakening. Very good base stats too. 
all of them pretty good base stats. I'm surprised. My prediction was that they will have base stats kind of like Rika. And I wasn't too far off. The, the only difference is like the base speed is a little bit lower than Rika, but I think the stats in general are pretty close. Yeah, yeah they're pretty close. But yeah, that's it. Let me know what you guys think about the new units. I am very excited. I'm a little bit surprised as well how well these turned out. Uh, some of them are more usable than the others off the bat, but I think eventually they will all be very usable and uh, very good. But yeah, let me know. Have you pulled any for yourself? I personally haven't gotten any for myself yet. I did pull some for some of my viewers, but not too much luck, honestly. The SP button has been pretty weird. That's all I gotta say. But yeah, leave a like if you enjoyed, sub to the channel, comment, uh, stay safe, take care. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one. Peace out.